What's up guys, we got a different kind of reaction video today. This one is a deep philosophical reaction video, which I want to talk about guys. I love to delve into philosophy and psychology with people on this channel as well. I'm going to dive into a lot of different areas in the near future. So drop a comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see me react to any more philo philosophy, psychology, different things like that. I'll get straight to it. This one's called, is trauma hereditary? Do we inherit our pain? And I think in certain ways we do, in certain ways we don't. This one is from under the skin with blind boy from the rubber bandits who's irish from limerick obviously we got russell brand who's from the uk let's get it guys make sure to drop a comment like subscribe all that good stuff let me know what you all want to see next guys you know i want to help the people let's go you're very interested in mental health why is that mate are you mad i say this looking across <laughs> at you and you've got a fucking bag on your head <laughs> Um, he does look like he doesn't know anything and is mad, but actually Blind Boy kind of speaks a little, you know, a good bit of truth, guys. I listen to his stuff sometimes, so. I, I, I wouldn't have called myself, I used to have severe, severe anxiety and depression about 10 years ago, and I'm now anxiety and depression free for 10 years, because well I've, I've got a rigid mental health system, I've got mm. a self-care system, mainly... I was lucky, like, I never suffered from mental illness. My issue was mental health, which to me means my view of myself, my view of other people, and my view of the world was excessively negative and fearful. Oh, so he basically is describing the difference between mental health and mental illness. That's really cool. I've never actually heard anybody kind of talk like that guy. So he was saying he just had anxiety and depression. I've never had those things, guys, but you can see from what he was saying that it's similar to what I do, guys, and what I recommend to all my clients, a routine, guys. He said, when I got a routine, a mental health routine, wake up in the morning, exercise. It doesn't have to be gym or running. It can be anything, yoga, stretching, swimming, whatever you guys like to do, do something as a routine in the morning, wake up at a good time before nine o'clock, preferably, before eight o'clock, preferably, I wake up at about eight, go to bed at 10 o'clock. You know, obviously I'm doing these videos now, Till 10 guys, so much love, show the love to me. I should be in bed already, but you know, that's just, I didn't get a chance to do it today, I was super busy, but guys, go to bed at a good time, wake up, work all day, don't neglect to work. A lot of people don't like to work nowadays, I love to work, guys. You know, your life should be just all work. You know, that's how you get over a lot of these problems. It's a good definition. So I just basically tested it. I, I, I re, reappraised how I felt about myself, how I felt about other people, and I do that on, on a daily basis. And mental health regime, really, to be honest, it's, it's no different to exercise. Could you, first of all, before we hear that, and I'm sure I'd like to hear what you do for your sort of your uh, regimen for mental health, could you describe the depression and anxiety as you experienced it 10 years ago? What was it yes. like? What did it feel like? And how did it impact your life? Um would have been about 18 or 19. The, the thing is, my main thing would have been anxiety. And the thing is with anxiety, anxiety can result in quite a lot of shame because my anxiety kept me from leaving the house. Mm. So I would, I'd get anxiety attacks in a certain place, like in the pub or in a supermarket. So the natural thing for me to do then, the logical thing was, oh, supermarkets give me anxiety attacks. I can't go there anymore. Mm. But before I knew it, I was kind of stuck in my room all the time, afraid to leave the house in case I get an anxiety attack. That then brings a, a ferocious amount of shame with it because then I start judging myself going, all my friends are capable of going to the shop. What's wrong with me? Mm. That then resulted in depression. So it's this really shitty cycle. And I think the root of my, like I was just afraid of being an adult. I was terrified of being autonomous, you know? Do, would, you, would you, so you were talking about the cause and that was going to be my next question. I don't know why I want you to know that that was going to be my next question. Like as if, I'm psychic. But like, <laughs> was there some sort of trauma, would you say? Or like, what do you think precipitated it? I mean, I understand this, like that cyclical idea of feeling ashamed and not feeling like you can deal with other people. I can still get a little bit like that now, as a matter of fact. But like, how does... Like, do you, but I would now relate that to, oh, this is because when you were a kid, this happened and that yeah. happened. Do, do you have that kind of awareness? Or? Yeah, when I, like, my parents were quite old, and when I, I, I was born with fairly bad asthma, but my... It's fucking, and now for a job, you put a bag on your fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. It's the one thing it says on a plastic bag. Do not put this on your head. They might, Dude, that's genius, bro. I add, if they were going to put something else, especially not if you've got asthma. <laughs> Amazing. That's gas. But, uh, Heroic. In a very That's so true. mythic sense. <laughs> my, uh, my Am I the first person to point that out? Because I want some credit. No, no, no one has pointed that particular one out. Yes. 
Thanks. <laughs> I mean, still demanding a round of applause with someone's opening up about their psychological history. That's, That's the nice. level of narcissism we're dealing with. So, like, you had, your, your parents were older and yeah. you, ha you had asthma as a boy. I had so very bad asthma and my, my dad would have been quite anxious. He and he, I can actually trace my father's anxiety back to the famine. He, I can, he learned how to be anxious off his ma, and uh, his ma learned how to be anxious off her ma, who was actually starving. Oh. So, it, 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 patterns of, of anxious behavior. And I'll do it, guys. And it sucks because when women are anxious, guys, it's not as bad as when men are anxious. Right, that's just plain and simple. When men are anxious, everything just goes to shit, guys. You know, men should be, like, leading the way, and it's kind of worse for dudes. Like, obviously, if you're a girl, you know, and if you're leading your team in a football match, or, you know, if you're in a surgeon in some office, it's not good to be freaking out all the time and have anxiety. So that's bad in a way, but let's say for the household and stuff, if the man is tripping out, <laughs> you know, it's not good. Yes. Depressive personality types will pass through. Yeah. And it's sort of amazing, but it makes sense. It's true. It? Like you, that you would, there would be a generational trauma is an idea. You know quite a lot about psychoanalysis. Don't you have a degree in it or something? I, I studied, I did like three or four years training to be a psychotherapist and then I stopped so I could wear a bag in my head. <laughs> Brilliant, good to see. What he means is he got a lot more money from the entertainment aspect than he did in the education aspect, which actually 100% is true, guys. You know, I know a lot of people in my personal life who <laughs> have a lot of big education, but zero money, guys. So entertainment is kind of the way to go, helping people. He is helping people indirectly as well as being a psychoanalyst on his podcast as well. So don't get a fool, guys. He does help people still, okay, absolutely, or else his business wouldn't be flourishing, like 100%. It's a good decision. The psychotherapy's loss is plastic bags gain. Um, yeah. like, so, w mate, like, so would you, so well, that idea of generational trauma, does that, like, you've just been quite frivolous, but that's well, sort of true, isn't there's it? There's two ways, like, there, there, there's a, there is actual research now being done into trauma being, being passed on genetically. They're looking specifically at ho people in the Holocaust and how genetically trauma is passed on. Now, that's a very new field, which is quite hard to get your head around but mm. the simple one is behaviors get passed on if if you're a young child and you're around if if your parent is excessively angry or yeah. if your parent naturally looks at things in a negative fashion yeah. th the child knows nothing other than to look at the parent as the authority of truth and forget about kids guys as well you know in terms of that aspect if you're just around friends family you know it can be when you're younger too when you're a kid or whatever but Anyone that you're around, friends, family, acquaintances, people that you hang out with you're at workplace, if they're negative, if they're whatever, it's like sticky, guys. It kind of wears off on you, man. So try and distance yourself from those people, bro. Especially your friends, bro. If your friends are just loser guys, and I mean that in the truest sense, guys. Like, because obviously, you know, I still live at home and shit. I'm not some winner guy on the internet, you know. But if your friends are not doing the routine every single day to positively, you know, improve their lives, then they're just negative, guys. It's just negative weight on top of you. You know, they're not going to change unless something changes in their life. You know what I mean? You need to get around people that are positive and uplifting people. This is one of the things I tell my, my coaching clients, guys. I have about 10 now. Get around people that are gonna positively impact your life, guys. And it doesn't have to be ditching all your friends. That's not what I'm talking about, guys. You know, you have to, in some aspects, guys, understand that your life, you only get one shot at this. You need to be around positive, uplifting people, guys. You know, there's no other way I can say it. You know, you have to be around uplifting people. You know, and I always tell my friends, bro, you're good. We're hitting the gym today. I'm positive. I'm uplifting him. You know, they didn't even know what's going on. They've probably the first time they've ever heard another man say, great job. Come on, man, get it, get it going. Like, let's go. You know, a lot of people don't get that, guys. Any, any time in their life, get around people that, that are like that, man. So we learn these things, but the beauty of being, becoming an adult and, and psychotherapy and self-help is that narrative you learn as a child, once you become a fucking adult, you can go, holy shit, that's not the way it is. I can rewrite my script. So, yeah, for me, my, my dad used to, he found out that I had asthma. He, the, the doctor would have said, well, there's a slight chance of death, but, you know, and then my dad would have ran out of the hospital going, oh, he's going to die. So when I was about three or four, if I was, like, to want to play soccer with my friends, he would just start going, no, you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like the worst thing to do because exercise actually helps asthma a lot, guys. It's like the best thing to do. Do you know what I mean? And that was off-putting. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and, and like he, he, man on, man on, mark him. You're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> so me being being four or five, it's like oh, the adult is telling me I'm gonna die if I do normal things that my normal Jeez. friends are doing too. That's crazy. And it was to protect me. But then when I got older, a normal thing meant. Wow. you know going to fucking school going out uh, things that were adult deep in my unconscious it manifested itself as a severe fear of uh, death 
That's good analysis, good self-analysis, holds up, doesn't it? Good narrativization. You know, it is good self-analysis. I think that a lot of the times when people are afraid of death, most of the time it's irrational, guys, because everybody does have to die at like 70 or 80 is like the average life expectancy, unless you get hit by a bus or a train. You know, certain illnesses, unless they really cut your life short, aren't going to hinder you to that degree. You know, your body is very resilient. You know, have faith in your body, you know. There we are. And on this show, we applaud self-awareness. <laughs> this is kind of new age. Um, but like... <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. That definition of adulthood isn't. Do you not think that could be, in a sense, the uh, essential definition of adulthood—an ability to control the own, your own narrative, to say, "I am no longer my trauma. I am no longer my past. I can recreate myself." Absolutely, that is the the the, the key to being a, an adult. I think is. Like it's it's first off, it's understanding the intrinsic value. Um, I am no better than anybody else. Nobody else is better than me because yeah. I've got an intrinsic value that can't be taken away. The other thing is to understand that no aspect of your behavior can define your value as a person. Mm. So for me, we'll say like my, my creativity, like my mental health is very much attached to my creativity. If, if I'm creating, then chances are I'm in a good mental place, you know? Mm. If I'm procrastinating, that's when I end up down the anxiety land. You know exactly, guys. When you're in a constant routine, you're never going to have anxiety. You're never going to have depression because you're constantly thinking about the next goal, the next euro that you're going to make, the next this, the next that. So you kind of create your reality, right? But for me, the crucial thing is to not... Be a horrible theme park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anxiety land. <laughs> <laughs> so I... I uh, uh, man. I just... I make sure that my creativity... Like, if, if I release a fucking short story or a podcast or whatever and it doesn't do very well, I have to be very cautious around how much I beat myself up over that. I can't allow my, an aspect of my, my behaviour, such as creativity, to define my value as a person. That's it. It's not really... It's more of an ego thing, guys. Like, even on YouTube, I posted videos today. They didn't do that well. But yesterday, I got 30,000 views for the day. So you have to kind of analyse that, okay, some days are going to be good, some days are going to be bad. You kind of have to understand that, guys. Some days are going to be great in the gym. Yesterday, I did... Uh, 10 reps for three sets with curls, you know, I did, I bench pressed 120 kilos, whatever, for reps, that's the best I've ever done, tomorrow, today, I felt like absolute terrible, guys, so, you know, you're going to have ups and downs, bro, this is how life is, man, you can't expect it to be always amazing, that's, it's unrealistic expectations. It's important, that's very interesting, it's huge, because I, you know, as a person that sort of toyed with celebrity, like, I've, find it extremely difficult and that model that I just described of attachment e.g. E with pornography or uh, you know substance misuse if I start becoming overly attached yeah even to oh this podcast has done well this hasn't yeah. done well then suddenly yeah then or googling your name you mustn't google your name do not google yourself right up the name hole no good ever comes from it I love it guys what was that called what was the of Russell Brand? so this is quite a number of years old it's about four years old. I will listen to more, guys. You know, I just like to see an Irish guy on it. That's why I reacted to this. So much love to um, to Mr. Blind Boy. Much love to you guys as well. Hopefully, you guys have liked this little deep psychoanalytic sphere that we went into. Let me know if you guys want to see more. I love you, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.